Hey everyone, this is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh and he is... I am Chris. And Chris he is. How are you doing today, Chris? I am doing wonderful. Enjoying my Sundays like I always do. Great, 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 great. We are here to talk about some fantasy football, of course. That's why y'all are turning tuning in. Uh, today we are bringing you an episode we are titling Remember When? And that's going to be a lot of... Uh, actually, all the players are players that have missed more than six games this past season you know some of them are superstars some of them are lesser known guys but that we just want you to kind of keep in your head and in your hearts so we're going to start off with some news some big news since we last recorded sam darnold got traded he got traded away from the jets chris why don't you take give us those details uh darnold got traded to the carolina panthers for a bag mm -hmm. of peanut no i'm just kidding uh for a sixth round in 2021 so this year's draft mm -hmm. and a second and a fourth in 2022 so uh i mean that second's got some value next year though yeah so, for sure um i, I and suppose even, though, just even a fourth cut, isn't, isn't, isn't even a fourth isn't isn't a worthless pick you know i mean you can still find some value in a fourth rounder guy uh comp, good comp picks are in uh, uh are in the fourth round Caught picture mm -hmm, at the end of the mm -hmm. fourth round, actually, I believe. Yep. So, uh, yeah. and third this year, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hit the, uh, I don't know, I guess hit the reset button on uh, Teddy Bridgewater, but I don't think they ever intended him to, you know, carry them to a playoff run. Um, in well, Carolina, does that, so. does it necessarily mean that Teddy's gone, though? I mean, Darnold's, Darnold's a cheap guy right now. I'm, I mean, I'm assu uh, personally, I'm assuming that, that mm -hmm. Darnold's going to be the starter next year. Right. But uh, but I I also wouldn't be super surprised if they want to just kind of play out Teddy a little bit more and maybe let, let him kind compete. Of... Are you saying? Yeah, I was thinking mm. more like Darnold sitting behind Teddy. You know, mm. just just kind of learning a little bit. You know, taking a, taking the... a taking one step back before making two steps forward, sort of thing. Sit behind the accurate um, veteran. Yes, yes. I mean, they didn't give up a ton as we just touched on, but. Uh... But let's let's okay. So let's let's move forward with the assumption that mm -hmm. Darnold is the starter next year. Sure. What do you, how does that how does that affect uh, CMC and DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson and um, Ian Sandy Thomas? Strong. There's the tight end. There's the there tight go. end. Good call. Good call. Um, yeah, I think it's a good move. I think I still have some belief in the talent of uh darnold i think uh he's gotten a pretty bad deal in new york i think a lot of players have gotten a bad deal in uh in <laughs> that's what happens when you play for adam case <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> can uh, you draw I, the short straw yeah it's almost like it's a meme you you leave you leave gays and you prosper so I, i'm not i'm not going the it meme route did. but uh you know it's it, i think there's something to be said for his draft capital no that doesn't make you a good player where you're drafted but he's got a live arm at the very least so for fantasy mm -hmm. Um, aspects. I don't know how many win losses they're going to pull down in Carolina, but I know that there's probably going to be quite a bit of volume. Um, not a great defense right now. Um, I know. I think Rule is a uh, Matt Rule is a defensive coach, so I think they're on the up and up. Uh, other but, way, other uh, way around. Oh, he is He's an, an offensive, offensive guy. Coach. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah. The Baylor, the Baylor and fans and should and know. Joe Brady is his quarter or his See, offensive Rule was a defensive guy, and that's why he got Brady because Joe Brady came from LSU. Well, not directly from LSU. I think he'd been in the NFL for a year. Anyway. Um, oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, Joe Brady. Uh, Rules Joe, the defensive guy and then and then brought in the, the offensive guy. Joe Burrow's guy, or, yeah, yeah. Joe Burrow's the, the, coach the, the, from LSU. Joe Burrow's offensive coach uh, from mm -hmm, LSU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, um, man, yes. a lot of volume, I think, passing, and I think he's got a live arm. It's a quick release. I've always liked that in my quarterback. Uh, mm hmm like a Marino or a Romo, um, regardless of results. Um, you Dolphins Cowboys fan. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Marino <laughs> angle there. I really did before Marino came out. That's why I mentioned Marino first. Or that's not why, but anyway. So, you know, I think it's an interesting move. I think it's going to result in better fantasy output than Teddy Bridgewater. And at the end of the day, that's what we care about. I think it's I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be a, a bump for – DJ, DJ Moore, Moore and yeah, I'm excited about that and Robbie Anderson. And, you know, honestly, I would be a little bit scared for mm -hmm. CMC at the moment, but the way that, and I know Teddy Bridgewater was a quarterback last year. Um, but you know, like they just funneled so much offense through CMC in the last, like even, even with rule and Brady coming uh Joe Brady, right. that is of course, 
uh, coming in last year, it was still like in those three games that uh, CMC did play in, and we'll talk about it more here in a second. Oh, right. But yeah, a lot of the r- offense ran through CMC still. So I, I gotta, I gotta think that it's still going to even with even with Darnold coming in. I think most, so. myself included, most folks would agree that Christian McCaffrey is the type of player that, given less volume, will only become more efficient. Period. Because there's many guys in the NFL we have to look like an Aaron Jones comes to mind when I think of an efficient running back. He gets to has to yeah. share some touches here and there, right? Unlike a CMC yeah. in the past. So I think you get an eighty percent, seventy five percent share a uh, 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 CMC, and and you're just going to okay. get probably comparable production because he's such a talented okay. dude and that average will go up. That's how I feel. So I wouldn't downgrade okay. him, but, but yeah, yeah, they need to put less on his shoulders, so to speak. For sure. Oh, well, yeah. Considering he injured his shoulder. last <laughs> um, <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, well, yeah. I don't think it was. <laughs> nope. It was kind of unintentional, but I'm going to roll with it. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's Sam Darnold. You know, I, I mean, maybe outside of outside of a two quarterback league, you're probably not drafting him. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's important to mention. Um, yeah, we're not talking. We're talking the. Pieces there's going to have to be some. There's going to have to be some major off season hype for Sam Darnold to be c- even considered for a guy like me. You know, who, I don't know like, his age. And off-hand. typically, the last guy in any of my drafts that is drafting a quarterback. You know. Yeah, for sure. And so, hey, he's he's on uh, uh, as far as dynasty goes. Uh, to your point, even more. Uh, even oh, single, oh, oh, a total even, bump up at Dynasty. Even single could be Dynasty, exactly. Like, it's worth a stash. He might be out there. You might be able to get him for a fourth-round pick you're going to throw away, throw away anyway in this upcoming rookie draft. Something like that, you know? Uh, maybe not a fourth, maybe a fifth. Uh, but Do you I'm think, just, okay, so say you're the Depending Sam on where Darnold you're sitting owner, at QB. Okay, so, but I mean, so say you have... Where they're sitting. Um, let's say... Uh, let's say a Matthew Stafford and a Sam Darnold on your Dynasty team. Are you trading away Sam Darnold for Who no, a fourth no. round? Uh, no, because I'm yeah, saying, exactly. Stafford could be gone in a couple years or get hurt or got gosh, you know who knows what. Um, in that case, no. But if I'm like but Pat Mahomes and I just happen to have two or three QBs stashed, I'm sorry, two or three, two or three total. Um, I I don't know, man. I think you can get more than a fourth round for um in Dynasty. So? Okay. I see. Yeah, but, I, I mean, look at the other weapons direction. that he's got in Carolina. You know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. just that alone makes me kind of very enticing. And especially if you're selling him to the right team that is has a maybe a, a Tom Brady, you know, and um, I don't know a Jimmy Garoppolo as their quarterbacks. You know, like eh, not exactly yes. doing all that. Yeah, great that's there. that's somebody who wants should take a chance on Darnold to answer your question. And and now your uh, example makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I Stafford. think you can get more than that. Than, yeah. than just yeah. a fourth round. That's I think I think you're it. I think you're shooting too low. It also depends on it's it's as always with trades. It goes by your league too. You know, like of course, some people are like and me I feel like and he's more wanna, of a don't ever want to budge on on players and you know. And I feel like he's more of a just a piece of a trade, not necessarily the centerpiece. Oh, I suppose. I mean, like I, I mean, like it's looking at my dynasty team move. right now, which I'm I'm actually okay with at quarterback with, but I'd give up a third for for Darnold just to have. A, a potential a potential guy on my team you know i could i, I could be talked into a third seeing what i could see is on the board at the time let's put it that way yeah that, that's not that's fair I th- it sounds like both of us are kind of fans of his uh, closet fans closet darnold fans <laughs> i just uh, let, let's I, I see what he can do out of New York. there let's put it that way i don't yeah, know agreed. if i'm going to say agreed. fan not a fanboy, but uh there's definitely room for growth and and is in a much better situation to succeed at the moment and I'm so. currently accepting trade offers for DJ Moore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. Um, so speaking of, uh, you know, guys that are just getting done with their freshman season, let's, hey, Chris, remember when Joe Burrow was the number one pick overall in the draft? And yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, this will come up later in the show, but uh, there was, I remember uh, uh, visually a uh, uh, shootout between him and Baker. Right about the time me and you were both kind of like, I don't know about Baker, man. And then he comes out and just balls. That was a heck of a shootout between him and uh, our next subject, Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of am in the uh, off-season personnel draft mode. So my thought process with Joe Burrow, first of all, immediately went to, uh, you know, I think the injury was, was uh, at, at the position he plays, he should be fine. 
Um, uh, he didn't make yeah, his I mean, hallmark it, on mobility, although he was mobile. Um, so I think he can run an offense very well in the NFL. What I saw from him last year was great. Um, in the mm-hmm. draft where they're sitting, I feel like they could land uh, Kyle Pitts or uh, Chase. Uh, Javon? Yeah, J- Jamar. Yeah. Jamar, thank you. Uh, Chase um, and you know, in although fantasy... they shouldn't, although they shouldn't do, I, they right. shouldn't pick either. They should pick Penny Sewell, Penny Sewell, Bengals. That's right. who you should be picking. They might be able to move Protect- back up in and Bro. do that if one of them falls, if one of those tackles falls. They might be able to do that and get one of these guys. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be honest though, the fantasy Maybe. in me want, wants to see, uh, wants to see Pitts go there. I think that'd be one heck of a, I want of Penny a starting Sewell. lineup. I don't need <laughs> if you. Could... Dude, I, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm an offensive line junkie. So like, no, it's good. It's good. You know, I was and, that, and that offensive line was day, terrible. Anyway. And I'm yeah, I'm stealing your thunder here. Keep going. Well, well, they uh they got rid of uh I'm sorry Whitworth two three years ago now. Mm-hmm. So that's they've been hurt ever since. Uh, but well, you they, know, they've put they've put uh they've put some some draft capital into their offensive line, but these got like their offensive line just keeps getting injured so mm-hmm. bad. So whatever. Or maybe they're hoping Keep... for healthy guys and they want to go skill position because if they do, their skill uh, skill position could be Boyd, Tiggins, Auden, Tate, Pitts, and Mixon. Or Chase, Tate, Tiggins, Sample, and Mixon. For those listening at home, Tiggins is... Uh... <laughs> T Higgins. T Higgins. But we, li- we like to call him Tiggins. I literally don't he even... plays for the Bengals and it sounds kind of like Tigger. Yes, it does. So I don't even type it out anymore. I just T I G I N. I like every time I see it, like T Higgins, my brain automatically puts it into Higgins. Like mm-hmm. it's just one of those things, mm-hmm. you know? You're it, right. So obviously if they go chase, I feel like they instantly become one of the better wide receiver trios in the league. If they go pits, uh, I really like that combo. Cause I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm high on pits in, in draft terms. Uh, let's not you forget. Certainly are. Bur- yeah, exactly. Uh, let's not forget Burrow's confidence. Uh, and despite only having like one really year starting, it was a historical year in terms of offense. And for a team that was not known for offense and in the toughest conference in the entire league, if you will. The uh, whack. <laughs> the whack. No, the SEC. Uh, let's see. I here. think it's the whack, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Or is exactly. it the Mac? He had 193 yards and zero TDs as in his first start. Oh, I'm sorry. And one pick in his first start and then three TDs the next week. So obviously there were some rookies up ups and downs. And I think most folks approached it in single QB leagues from that angle. You know, let's let the rookie simmer a little and see how he, he turns out. And he really started the ball. Like I mentioned at the beginning, he, he uh, had that shootout with Baker in week seven. Uh, and he's really starting to become kind of a captain comeback. Uh, that's what I like to see. Um, uh, speaking of uh, your favorite team there. Who was Captain Comeback for the Colts? Trivia. And really, he's kind of Jim Sorge. No, not Jim Sorge. Jim, but Billy it, is a, it is another Jim, though. Oh, fish! What's his name? <laughs> uh, I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember. Head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Still, yes, it is. It is Harbaugh, isn't it? <laughs> it is Captain Comeback. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. Rem- I like. I'm like. I'm like. I could picture him in his khaki pants, but I'm like, what the this, heck? This is, is his my last this, name. This is my age coming out, folks. <laughs> I, I watched. I actually watched. No, no, no. I remember. I, I, well, I don't remember watching it. I did that. He played. And he was. Colts. He was. He was. He was a fun guy to watch. He 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 tuck it and run, man. He was. He was rough. Um, but I love the talent around Burrow. So there's no reason not to expect probably a QB one season from him. Um, I, I, but more in particularly in fantasy, since I don't like to reach for quarterbacks, uh, we don't like to reach for quarterbacks. We're talking about the pieces more importantly. And I think it's just, it's going to be a great year for the pass catchers and Joe Mixon, um, especially if Pitts lands there. Uh, I think the better NFL move is probably chase, but for fantasy, I really want to see Pitts and that tight end value, that positional value. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe the better NFL move Le- is... Late to Burrow for a decade. You know, that's just that marriage. Like, I think it's really... He just I mean, you can, make the, the uh, you can make the argument that Pitts is actually a better because then you could find better value with receiver later in the draft or even next year in next year's draft too. You know, you don't need to necessarily spend... Depending right? on how you feel about Boyd and Tiggins being your one and two. Well, yeah, I tend to, dismiss, but I mean, I tend to there's dismiss, also... dismiss Auden Tate, but I shouldn't. He's fine. Oh, I, I'll dismiss him right now. He's he's just <laughs> he's a big he's body. There. 
Yeah, so um, he's a guy, Tig- and he but plays me for and the Bengals. You, but neither one of us are in, in in the delusion that Boyd or Tiggins is a is a number one. They're just not. So Chase, um, did could... you say that Burrow didn't have a uh, touchdown in Week One? That's what I've. Got. Oh, did he run one in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I've been looking up while you've been talking. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he ran one in, and we did. I'm gonna enjoy watching Burrow, Joe Burrow this season. Let's put it that way. Joe no, Burrow, he's, he's Herbert, quarterback. Tua, and um, what's the guy in Arizona? That guy that I'm not, that I'm not very high on. So, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> so let's move on to Christian McCaffrey. He played in only three games last season, but in those three games. And granted, this isn't a full PPR, but he averaged 27.3 points per game. That is that is like elite quarterback level kind of scoring right there. I mean, and if and if you guys remember, and I certainly do in 2019, um, a lot of people's championships came down to Christian Team Christian McCaffrey versus Team Lamar Jackson, which is right. exactly how that one league and mm-hmm. our keeper league it ended up being. Because I had Christian McCaffrey and I ran into the Lamar Jackson buzzsaw in 2019. In 2019, Christian McCaffrey was the number two overall yeah. fantasy yeah. player. That was Behind. above every other quarterback, every other fantasy player, but Lamar Jackson. He yeah. scored over 400 points that season. Granted, that's in a full PPR, and we normally go on half PPR scoring. I'm just kind of like throwing that out there. But that that's like um, LT ter- territory, right? Like it wasn't the best ever, right? But it was real close. No, no, no. But yeah, it was it was really so close. Surpass those quarterbacks. That's crazy. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in in 2017, in Christian McCaffrey's rookie season, you know how many catches he had? Ninety. Just take just take a stab. One hundred and two. I forget. Uh, it was only 80, but for a running back, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. There, I mean, there's some elite level receivers that don't even get 80 catches in a season. It's, it seems like ages ago that they, they kind of eased him into his rookie season in terms of running between the tackles, you know? He was more yeah. of a featured pass catcher. It seems crazy. Yes, he was. Like, why weren't you giving him the ball on the ground a little more? Go ahead. <laughs> but they were just kind of easing him in because they still had, um, I believe I get it. it was, yeah. was it Jonathan Stewart still there? I think it was. I looked it up that. and I couldn't. I didn't write it down. It wasn't D'Angelo. D'Angelo's been gone for. Several no, years. he was gone before. He was gone gone before Jay Stu. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so and even in 2020, in those three games, he was still getting over five catches a game too. Mm-hmm. So Christian McCaffrey, if you're playing in any sort of PPR league, it, half, full, whatever, you gotta you gotta draft him. Some I I would certainly. Um, kind of promote him as a potential first overall pick still even though his injury history last year that was i mean he's, it was a shoulder still, he, he still strained needs his to be ankle. in the conversation it, for sure mm-hmm. it wasn't like it wasn't damaging long term uh or like potential any let me rephrase that it wasn't any injury that's going to potentially hurt his it shouldn't hurt his production at the very beginning of the 2021 season no. it wasn't like he tore his acl halfway through the year um or anything like that it was a he sprained his ankle and then he injured his shoulder. That's all it was, folks. Right. You know? get banged up. He'll be fresh. Yep. Two fluke injuries, whatever. Um, I, you know, it, the only thing that, the only thing I could say that maybe is a knock on Chris McCaffrey is that he's doesn't have a crap ton of power, like, you know, a, a Derrick Henry, but he's also a lot smaller than Derrick Henry, too. Derrick Henry's a mountain. Chris the McCaffrey. Mountain Christian McCaffrey is like a slippery fish, yeah. you know, he's just, he's small and he just, he just gets in there and the offensive line isn't that great in Carolina, but at the same time, like, do I want that offensive line to get better? Because that's how Christian McCaffrey is just getting all these little dinks and Dump dunks, off. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. He's like, Oh, I can't, I don't have time to throw the ball deep. CMC's open. Get him the mm-hmm. ball. You know, that's but also he's, I, he's the new prototype. He's, he's what the 2020, 20, you know, 21, uh, NFL he's the, court, he's the quarterback of this day and age NFL or the, I'm sorry, the running back of this day and age NFL, exactly. you know, exactly. Um, yeah, he, he and, and moments, like, yeah. and like we said, like we were saying when we were talking about Sam Darnold is that CMC has actually been kind of coach and quarterback proof too, because in 2019, he went through three different quarterbacks that year. You know, he had Cam Newton, he had Kyle Allen, Andrew. and then he had er, blank. Um, <laughs> I don't remember who, I don't remember who the third guy was. Um, hmm. But I mean, you know, he 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 thrived. He thrived with all of them. 
He thrived on a bad offensive line, or it wasn't as bad as it was last year, but still, um, you know, he's, he's survived two coaching changes. And like I said, with the Sam Donald um, aspect too, and at the very top of this little uh, spiel about CMC, is that, you know, 27.3 points per game under a new, with a new head coach and a new offensive well, coordinator. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you take under on one hand, you got to learn a new system. On the other hand, uh, Joe Burrow, this system, uh, remember Donald seeing ghosts, quote, seeing, I think it was last year, quote, seeing, seeing ghosts. ghosts out here. Yeah. Yeah. So this kid's going to be coached up first of all. And I believe in this coaching staff. Yes. Rule is a defensive guy, but he's, he also seems mm-hmm. to be a very good manager of the team. Um, and, and Joe I think, Brady was I, a quarterback coach too. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, did I say, I might've just said Burrow. Uh, anyway, Joe, Joe Brady, uh, Burroughs. Did you say Burrow? I might have. <laughs> anyway, I met Joe Brady, the, the, uh, offensive coordinator for Carolina Panthers. You know, this ball is going to be out of his hands. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, he's got a quick release. So I think CMC would be just fine. Yeah. I think it'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the next guy is, uh, related. Who is that? Who's, who's that next guy? Oh Saquon. yeah. I remember. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, a guy that like, remember when not to, I'm not trying to shoehorn this in, but remember when, uh, Saquon was still playing in college and I was just like, can we, uh, is there any way we could possibly like just draft a running back like right now and, uh, just have him on my team for his rookie season. That was mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley. He was yep. so special for yep. Penn state. Yep. Me, me oh man. That. He, he destroyed Iowa when they played, when they played each other. Say, Josh it, and I are Hawkeye fans. Uh, uh, he still lives in Iowa. Wow. I used to live there. Um, so we just, we just fell in love with Saquon uh, in school. And I, what I meant by the similarities is we talked about injury and we talked about receiving ability injury. I think off the, none of us are doctors. I don't like the injury prone label, but I think I'm not most, anymore. Right. But most of us would probably agree that if, you know, uh, put to task, we would say Saquon is more injury prone than CMC, right? Um, he certainly has been in his in it's his just, NFL career. So to this to this point, yeah. to this six, point, I think it's six games missed in 2019. Then of course a whole bunch, most of them. What was it? Week two, he got hurt. Week one, anyway. Who? Um, Saquon. Yeah, it was week two, one, I believe. Was it one? Okay. So you know. Uh, it's, Throw that out, uh, that season out. Uh, yeah, you might have to move. When we're splitting hairs with the top one, two, three, five running backs, uh, I'll have a couple uh, scenarios for, for us here in a second. Uh, he averaged six and a half targets per game. Or I'm sorry, that's what he's currently yeah. averaging, six and a half per game. I went with a per game average, obviously, because he only played one game last year and only 13 in 2019, I believe. So I thought per game was more appropriate. So you CMC, Saquon. PPR now is that six? No now is that six per game? Is that for his NFL career, or is it just 2019 career. and 2020 career? Uh, well, that's I feel like that's sort of an unfair stat because in 2018, in his rookie season, Eli Manning was his quarterback for most of that season, and it was just the uh, he was force feeding Saquon. He was, yeah. It was, uh, you know, I don't know who's better, uh, Eli or or, or Dan, Danny Dimes. Uh, cause I have a very low opinion of Eli Manning. Yes. I'm a Dallas fan, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my point Eli is, it was bad at the end of his career though. My point is I think Saquon's going to always get dump offs. Just kind of like we justified it with CMC just a moment ago. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's just about his wear and tear and his percentage of use. He's going to get a ton of targets. He's going to get a ton of carries. Um, you just want to manage it. And I think again, going back to the prototype in today's NFL, these, uh, dump offs to the running back are extensions of the run game. So, in half point and in full PPRs, these guys are just automatics. I don't, I don't really shy away because of injury, but I wanted to bring that up at the beginning of it in terms of I would probably put Saquon below CMC to split hairs because of injury, quite frankly. Uh, five yards per carry in 2018, 4.6 in 2019. Uh, with Galladay and perhaps uh, a tackle, an offensive tackle at 11 in the draft, Saquon should be an elite talent, uh, elite again. Um, my scenario is, uh, Saquon or Camara next year, uh, th- th- coming up this draft with no breeze, Wh- which way are you going? Saquon or Camara? Uh, as number one overall, or just or, like, or, 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 uh, wherever two or three, just which one you pick and which one do I like better? Uh, Saquon every day, because I think he's much, he's a far better, a far more talented running back. Uh, yes. I don't know about far. 
Maybe more talented. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think all around he is. A I just far think Kamara is a different, a little bit different. They're both amazing receivers. I think we both agree on that. I think Kamara's skill set is where Kamara's game is. Uh, well, I think he's a heck of a touchdown scorer too, Kamara. I think he's a heck of a goal line back. He's got a nose for the end zone, and he's hard to bring down. So I'm just saying they're different okay. in that way. I still agree with you though. Saquon better, and I probably still go Sna- Saquon in that scenario because I might knock Kamara because of the quarterback situation that I'm. Unsure did of. you did you miss that little story I said and about Saquon and college and everything? I'm a little biased. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and like I, I said, I got, I'm still, I got I got me some Saquon right. love. Like I said, and I'm still on your side there. But I mean, um, you know, ironically, I manage both these dudes in a keeper league, so I have my pick, so to speak. But um, I go Saquon. I again, I'm split. We're splitting hairs. CMC, Saquon, Kamara, uh, Cook, and Henry. Um, Camara, I think I knock him because of the quarterback situation. I'm not sure how that plays out through a whole season. I'm, um, I'm, I'm right there with you. And then I looked at the, at the ADP of Saquon and others around him. He's going behind Zeke right now. Did I, I say Camara? Yeah, I, oh, I saw that like a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and I'm like, what? 109 for Zeke, 110 for Saquon. No, I'm taking Saquon every single day, and this is a Dallas fan, folks. Oh, yeah, no, boy. not. This, this, I'm going to laugh all the way to the bank if that's the case. You I know? mean, I looked, like, at the, I looked at the top 10 or whatever. Uh you know, where the first receiver came off the board at about five, you know, and it was CMC, Henry, Cook, and I forget who the fourth was now, but I was like, I don't know. I'm Camara. still kind of putting, yeah, and it was Camara. I'm still putting Saquon up there. So me and you sound like we're on the it's same page. Too. I just want to tell folks to not forget about how talented this guy is. Remember when Saquon was the best running back in the league. Let's put it that way. I remember. I remember when he was the best running back in college football. Hey, his numbers might not have reflected it, but man, you could just, he was just oozing talent. Like yeah. when he, in college and mm-hmm. it's, and I still, I still think he's got it. It's, he seems like he's, a good kid he's sprained his ankle and he has torn an ACL. That's mm-hmm. all he's done. It's not like he tore his Achilles and he's, or he tore his ACL and both knees or whatever. Plenty right. of people have been coming back from ACL injuries. And Saquon did it early enough in last season that it really shouldn't affect this season too much. Nope. nope. So this is 2021 and that, that, that surgery has come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah dude, it, it, it used to be a career ender, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, 30 years ago, but 90s, still in the nineties. Yeah. Oh sure yeah. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. as, even as little as the night or as early as the nineties. Yeah. I was thinking the eighties, but I guess that was like 40 years ago. No. Woohoo. <laughs> Wait a bit. Not be 40. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, uh, our next player that we were going to talk about, Cortland Sutton. Uh, he only played in one game last season, um, but in 2019 he did play with he did play all 16 games. Unfortunately, he played with Joe Flacco. Oh, uh, no. uh, uh, he, the last five games of the season, he played with Cortland Sutton, and there was a, another quarterback in there that I cannot I cannot find out who it Are was. Are you talking about the guy I, that like, wasn't a quarterback? The quarterback, the defensive back, or whatever he was. That played for no, one. No, that week? was last year. That was last. Oh, year. you said twenty nineteen. I'm apologies. talking about twenty nineteen. My apologies. There, there, there was, there was a guy in there in twenty nineteen. I and, I and there is because like if you look at the number of games that Joe Flacco played and the number of games that Drew Lock played, uh, there's a gap in there, and I can't figure out who that middle quarterback is. I really couldn't find it. Was, it it, in, was, on it the was John Elway. It was John Elway. He came down from the booth from the office. From the front office, could he put could he put the bottle down long enough? Can yeah. he put the bottle down long hor- enough hor- to actually go throw hor- the ball around? Horse teeth and all. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> apparently we hate John Elway. Sorry, Kevin and other Denver fans at home. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Um, so with Joe Flacco, Carton and Sutton was averaging twelve point six four points per game. That's not great, but it's also not bad. That's a nice, solid kind of high, high low end two. wide receiver two. Thank you. Low, oh mid mid wide receiver two. Ooh, okay. But then with Drew Locke, he was only averaging ten point two points per game. Um, a rookie, Drew Locke, correct? Yes, mm-hmm. and I don't know if Denver needs to fix their offensive line or if they need to fix Drew Locke, but Drew Locke wasn't very good last year. Um, I, I I like I really like Cortland Sutton. I didn't realize that he was a three guy and he ran in the in the combine in well, i'm sorry what was that what? time again four five yeah it was a four five four i believe at his size yeah uh, that's, yep, four, five, that's, four. Fine. that's fine for a six three guy that's that's not great but it's also you know not me out there running a 40 so you know i mean you know me back in the day anyways um 
but this, but with Drew Locke in 2019, in those five games that he did play with him, he was targeted eight p- times per game. So that's that's not bad. It's, Locke was looking his way. He was just having some bo- Locke troubles came out firing connecting. for sure. There's one thing you could say about Locke in college and coming into Denver the last year and a half or whatever. He's got to throw. He's got to get it. All, it just he's a gunslinger in my book. For he is, but kind he's of not the negative the term, deep. kind of the negative and side of weird. the term, <laughs> but. Uh, because he's been erratic and awful, but I'm just saying the volume will be there, you know? Yeah. Anyways, um, that's kind of all I have about Cortland Sutton, but I just like, because I I, I wanted to kind of highlight him. Because, Man, Cortland Sutton's really good in whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, really? Huh? And so I just kind of took a look at the numbers and everything. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, he's a big receiver. He's not the fastest, but, you know, he's, he's good at contested catches and everything. And mm-hmm. he, apparently he's a very good route runner as well. So, you know, if him and if Sutton and Drew Lock, if Drew Lock is the quarterback next year, or at least at the start of the season, if they can get in sync with each other, I mean, Cortland Sutton can easily be a nice, solid wide receiver too for you that you could get probably in. In like, I'm assuming some people are going to forget about him, so you could probably get him in like the fifth round or so. Mm-hmm. Just just a guess at at this moment in you know early April, but. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely wait for the value to come to you there with that guy. Don't, don't, don't go. I mean, you could even get him later, but I mean, fifth round, like that's not bad right there, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. for a guy that easily has, um, you know, like some third round value, but to get him in the the fifth or maybe even the sixth, you know, not bad. What's the next yet. guy, Chris? Uh, more value at receiver. Um, this one's a veteran, more of a veteran though. Odell Beckham Jr. Um, he's Torius ACL in week seven. Uh, in a, I mentioned earlier in the show in a QB, QB duel of epic proportions between Baker and Burrow, uh, his stats would look better if he'd have finished that game, you know. So uh, that that's yeah. to keep in mind. Um, probably questionable week one coming into this uh, into this season. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, again, this is all about value. It's going to push him down, push him down. Um, I don't. He's not the type of player expected to carry an offense anymore or make one or two just amazing plays per game. That's not his role anymore. And it's really, I don't think it's what Cleveland is asking him to do anymore. Um, You know, through attrition, his contract number has kind of become more reasonable because the other contracts have gotten more, more and more high, if you will, like Galladay and whatnot. So I think they just need him to uh, produce um, and be healthy, of course. Uh, So uh, yeah, that's that's been Odell's problem in his career. Yeah. So did these, Stats I'm going to share with you here are a little, little, I guess, negative, but uh, I want to put it in Fire pers- at perspective. So his ADB is 5.02, so the second pick of the fifth round. I think that's still okay, but I'd like to see it come down a little because he hasn't scored double-digit touchdowns since 2016. He hasn't mm-hmm. sniffed 100 set receptions since 2016. Uh, the mm-hmm. Cleveland offense is among the best. I think we can all agree on that, but their calling card is defense and, run- and the running attack. We're in love with Chubb. There's a reason for it. We're also, I also like Baker quite a bit, but I think Baker plays very well in an NFL play action offense. And that's what Cleveland is running. Doesn't mean Beckham can't fit into that role, fit into this offense. Um, he's a very talented dude still, even if he's lost a half a step, um, he's still one of the best route runners we've ever seen, quite frankly. And, and I don't even like the guy very much, but I have to give him credit where credit is due. Uh, Baker's game seems to be maturing and he's taken a better care of the ball. Uh, he realizes uh, that the point, you know, that the production will come within the framework of the offense. Uh, but throwing 40 times a game is not how Baker will produce. Uh, so Beckham's volume will not be elite, but I think his efficiency can be elite because again, he's still a really talented dude. So, but depending how far he falls, he could be a heck of a value. Um, the days of him being a wide receiver one are gone, but he could finish as a wide receiver one. If Cleveland has a type of year they're capable of ha- having, and he stays healthy. What, Josh, do you think about 1,200 yards and six touchdowns? Like, do you think that's doable? For 2021? Yeah. I'd say more like 10 and, uh, like 1,009. Still would put him at a low end wide receiver one. Yeah. Like, at, a glance, and, at a glance. And maybe like, and maybe on like 80 catches too. Like, he's not going to, I don't think Od- Odo Beckham is a 100 catch guy. Correct. That's, that's kind of why I'm digging down deep on this a little bit more. So, like Allen Robinson territory, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns. I would, I would rather have Allen Robinson yeah. even with Andy okay. Dalton. I'm probably on your side there. What a, uh, I don't have a list in front of me after that. I just, and I just, I like, I think I'm, uh, and this entire time you've been talking, 
not I guess what I'm trying to say, not necessarily history. drafting either or, because they're not in the same territory in the draft. But in terms of numbers, I think right. they could get there. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, ceiling. I think he's still ceiling. good. I, th- I think ceiling. he's, well, and I mean, like his ceiling is actually probably higher than that. I'm you just think like, so? okay. that's that, um, I think that there's potential. I just that, like him reading, reaching that potential is just. It's a chance. Uh, it's just, it, it's that's just where that the five, injury, uh, second pick injury, of the fifth round comes injury, in. Injury, you know, it's. Yeah. If he if he actually plays healthy for 16 games, like he's at 100% for 16 games for an entire season mm-hmm. even with Baker, I bet he could easily hit 90 catches, 100 uh 1400 yards and, you know, 11 it's touchdowns. Very good, it's a very good defense in Cleveland, so they're going to have more opportunities to have the ball, to possess the ball and score. So I love that about Yeah, I just uh, I think I think that offense. he could. It's just oh, man, he's got to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a big if right there. But if he falls like the sixth, I mean, you're talking about a steal for your wide receiver too. So that's, that's just, or uh, even your three. You know, just uh, depends on how you're how you're going in your draft. The, in your first five picks, yeah, exactly. Um, so I just I, I think it's he's a great. Uh, in fact, the way you did your the list, um, I just thought worked out really well. I wouldn't have normally targeted talking about Beckham. Uh, and I'm seeing some value here. So I think that's important to mention to folks listening at home because I'm I'm a Beckham detractor. I've not been a fan of his. I've more or less never managed him on any of my fantasy teams. Uh, I he kind of rubs actually. me the wrong way. But me he's neither. been kind of quiet lately in terms of locker room guy. Um, so that's a good sign. And again, we're talking about wide receiver one, high end two numbers, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Like It could very well happen in this offense. So keep yeah. an eye on the ADP in the offseason, folks, and see what we can do oh and in dynasty he might be a good buy low um the one thing i saw today when i was looking stuff is that there's some whispering in the bushes that the browns could potentially be trading him you know i read that it was a blurb in november is uh from shefty is the only sniff i think I if caught. they i think <laughs> if they get i think if the browns get the, uh, a deal that they like they'll do it i don't but i don't i think it's gonna have to be something that's and I don't think they want to move forward favor. with Jarvis's. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm a fan of Jarvis, and he, he performed admirably last year, but I don't think they want to move forward okay. with Jarvis. And uh, I'm sorry, is it? Uh, DPJ, hit, Donald oh, Peoples Jones, not hit, and not, also Riggins. Riggins. Thank you. I couldn't. I got to get in but this. But that, 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 that's kind of their wide receiving core right there, Sands, Eld- Odell Beckham. So Last year, yeah. Yeah, that's because they did fine. Thin. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, they did pretty good. Baker had a good year. But they also it wasn't great, but it was good. They also didn't enter the season that short, so right, yeah. Let's move on to another big receiver, big name receiver that we have mm-hmm. on our list here, and that's Julio. He missed, um, I believe he missed seven games last season. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. Oh, he did. Okay, yeah. Um, so this we're we're about to enter in Julio's eleventh in the NFL, and wow. it's it's the age thirty two season. It doesn't feel like it, but hey, time flies when you have Julio on your team. Um, he has been a really great receiver for you know the probably nine nine of those eleven years. His rookie season was 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 good, but it wasn't like elite. And last year was not very good, but the other nine seasons have been really well. His problem is, as everyone knows about Julio, is that he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns for whatever reason. I don't. I have no Julio idea why. Touchdown Jones. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, was that like, one ironically, season? Julio touchdown Jones. What was you that know? like 2018 like, or I think it's 2018? He, he he, I think he finally hit double digits, maybe. No, I think he hit eight. But he's, or he nine. was like on fire in the first few weeks. Had yeah, like five, and then and it, it just went dry. Off. <laughs> but it was so funny because it was like Julio touchdown Jones. Suddenly he scored touchdowns, yeah. and then he wasn't. And then the law of averages caught up with his DNA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean. So Julio, he missed like he and he it was just kind of like scatter shot of the games he missed. He missed three, five, twelve, and then the last four mm-hmm. weeks too. Um, I is he's just like catching up with Julio. I mean, it probably is to some extent. He's just he's not healing as fast as he used to and everything. And as people who have managed Julio in the past, you know, he does usually miss a game or two every season. Well, this season, this past season, it was seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know, like. He did average 13.4 points per game last season, and that is in half PPR. So that's that's not bad. That's not bad. If he would have played in even 15 games, you know, like like Julio normally does, he would have finished off as wide receiver 13. 
I think, and that's just behind where Allen Robinson, like he, it's literally like a half a point behind where we're Allen Robinson right, Same territory we were talking about yeah. potentially with ODB. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And you know, I'm, I'm still willing to be on the Julio train for next season. I just don't necessarily want him as like my wide receiver one. If, if I can help it, I better have two really solid running backs. That I'm really ready to go to battle with, and then maybe have Julio as my my one and then if Julio's gonna be my one my next my next pick better be, be a wide like, receiver like, like a keenan allen or something along those lines like another yeah great something to help stabilize one, that if you will yeah but i mean if i mean would you be happy getting julio in like the back half of the third or the beginning of the fourth in this particular scenario i'm set at running back with two you know bell cows for lack of a better term is what you're saying yeah, yeah so you got a Say you got a um, an Aaron Jones and a, 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 a Austin Eckler, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I could, as long as I'm coming back in the fourth and getting a solid, uh, you know, like I said, wide receiver two type, and then just pounding running back after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, more of a yeah, for sure. Two twos, if you will. Two high end twos is what we're trying to say. Yeah, I think. or okay. two, or like you know, have Julio being like your he yeah he's still he's technically your mm-hmm. wide receiver one because you drafted him first. But then you have this wide receiver too that maybe has, um, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a really high ceiling, you know, mm-hmm. of being like maybe not the the best wide receiver in fantasy football, but definitely somewhere up there as a. a, a well, and we're getting one. Uh, we're getting no mini camp, but we are getting training camp this year, right? Uh, uh, with, something like that. Some, I don't with, know, man. With some COVID restrictions, I believe, still probably. Yeah. Um, my point and, is that, and who knows how this 17 game season is going to pan out exactly thank you that's exactly what i was going to I, go into i, I want still to see a full think, i'm still i'm still on Julio, board with and i worry about him finishing a 17 game season i'm still on board with the the fact that we should just stick to at we as fantasy players not just you and i but as fantasy players in general we should just stick to a 16 game schedule no um, I, I want 17 uh assuming that you know I don't because because even even in so week sixteen or week. in week seventeen you're not you're not really no one hardly anyone is playing fantasy football in week seventeen anymore. I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait you wait, add wait. week you add a week eighteen in yeah, there, week. Uh, and like it's just going to be less teams that are playing for anything. No, no, no. I'm it's not talking be, about playing to the garbage. end of the NFL season. I'm talking about playing to the week before the end of the NFL season. Which hey, I don't even want that. I want I, I want do. fifteen games of fantasy football. I think there's going to be too many it. divisional matchups with too much product uh, uh, productive football to be played in no. that second to last week of the season that we're going to miss. I don't think so. I do. I think, I think, and, and we voted on this in our dynasty league, but I think that we should have just t- taken a wait and see approach to it. Now, but to, to I will back this up a little bit. Let me, let me, let me rephrase this. I don't want to go on a tangent, but uh, I could be talked into it. If I'm talking about an expanded playoff platform uh, uh, format, what I mean by that is getting the luxury of doing maybe two week matchups. For for better or worse, some people do and don't like those. I could I could mull that idea over, but I don't want to go down that path too much. But uh, we can save that for a dynasty off season chatter show. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, Is that all you have? I mean, video? so go ahead. So I mean, well, okay. So and here's the thing too that we kind of touched on this already. But if the wide receiver thirteen in twenty twenty uh, their ADP. I don't remember who the wide receiver, thir- the thirteenth re- receiver that was drafted was, but it went like mid mid to late third round. So if Julio's, if you're going to take Julio off the board as the th- wide receiver thirteen coming off the board, that's about where you're going to have to draft him. Third, mid well, to that's late where third. His production, where we're uh, guessing, will lie. So I, I, I and I think I mean, we'd all like to get be. him later. We'd all like to get him later. Is what I'm saying. Like, he, you know, does Julio have one room. more wide receiver one season in him? I bet he does. I am not going to bank on it, though. Does I'm your, gonna, t- I'm does your tune change in Dynasty? What's that? Does your tune change in Dynasty? As, as far, far as, as what? His value, Julio's value. Does your tune change? Do you want to get out this Well, year? obviously, his, his value is a lot lower because you're looking at maybe one last hur- hurrah okay. with Julio. Th- that's what I'm pushing you on. You're, you're thinking just this year, and then, the, and then the cliff is there, as opposed to the cliff is there right now. That's what you're getting at. Yes, I think I think there's one more year in in Julio. If you're in Dynasty and you can get him cheap, yeah, I, that I might actually go look at that later today. And whoever has Julio, maybe try and get a team. But cool. 
I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to sell the farm to get him. Not, not at all. And I mean, you're, we're, they're, they're talking well, about especially trading Especially if you're in now mode and you believe he's got another, you know, low, low end one, high end two year left in him, then yeah, it would be silly to sell now. So even after. if you're not in win now mode, I mean, if you're just trying to get, just trying to make your team better for this season and maybe your team does pop off and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think mine will this year, but that's okay. I can, can still try and be in contention, right? Sure, sure. Uh, what's your next guy? I believe it is uh, oh, Samuel, Debo. Right? Debo. Debo Samuel. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, just right off the bat here, his ADP is 10.3. So we're talking about, you know, significant value. Uh, depending on where he lands in terms of it's also April, two. so it's, exactly yeah. ADP um, is kind of irrelevant. He's but. not a PPR guy. Probably will never see a hundred a hundred receptions in San Francisco in his career. Um, he um, he needs he needs a high catch rate and efficiency sure. to excel in fantasy due to high running volume in San Francisco. Uh, but but that is exactly what he does. A lot of behind the line of scrimmage throws, pitches, ends end arounds. They will get the ball in his hands and he will run you over or run around you. He is just a He's, he's a pleasure he's to watch a, he's with the a, ball in his hands. He's an interesting uh, receiver that works very, very well for that Kyle Shanahan offense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's exactly and, what I'm going like, to say. I don't think I don't think I don't think San Francisco has like a a, a a true like like prototypical wide receiver one, but they have a bunch of guys that are all kind of like you know they're like one Bs or Couldn't you said know it better myself. Couldn't have said it better myself. Kyle Shanahan is on record saying he doesn't quote need a true number one alpha receiver. They're nice to have, hence Julio when he had him in Atlanta, and he's not opposed to paying them. Uh, he just doesn't need that prototype guy. He doesn't need that alpha, right. that six three guy. You know, right. uh, Jimmy G is as good as gone. Uh, so we're looking at um, what I'm hoping is one. You don't think? So? Well, he's as good as not starting. I, I don't think he's going to be the starter. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you move up. I think they believe so much in Shanahan and their mm. offense that they're going to be able to keep the ship afloat with a rookie that can run. Because uh, I think it's going to be Fields or Lance. I think it should be Fields. I think it will be Fields. I think, I think it should be Lance. You think so? To, and 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 hear me out. So they keep Jimmy of... Garoppolo. They keep Jimmy Garoppolo up for the remainder of his, or of his contract, which is this season. Mm -hmm. And then you 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 mold Trey Lance into the quarterback that he can be. And next season he'll come out and he'll be the next Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I disagree in that I have fields higher than Lance, especially coming out of the game. For this time. season, yeah, sure. Well, uh, overall, too, uh, as eh. of now. Uh, but again, it's April. Uh, although that means the, the draft is this month. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm like, it's it's draft time. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, oh, it's April. Like, the, mm. the shows are coming in the next two weeks, which means Chris is doing more and more homework. So, um, so that's where I'm at. Uh, but I think it's important to focus on the ex the hypothetical example of Lance or Fields because they're both exceptional runners. Lance more for the running. Yes, he's probably the better runner. I think he's the bigger athlete if my memory serves. So I'll, I, I'm just going to say that uh, Kyle Shanahan um, is, you know, for lack of a better term, a kind of a genius. And I don't think Jimmy G will be starting this year. I think they've seen the limitations. The rumor has it that it's going to be Mac Jones. I'm not buying that yet. And it's not even just a rumor. Like it's guys that I listen to and believe in. And like, they're telling them that oh. the sources they trust are telling them Mac Jones. So I hope they're, I hope it's a smoke screen. Uh, I hope so too, man. I, that that's not a quarterback yeah. worth no, worth not, giving up three first round picks for. Exactly. Not to bury Mac Jones for goodness sakes. He they could like have drafted there. Mac Jones wherever they were drafting from. Where was that? 10? I, uh, 12? No, no. Dallas is at 10. Um, 12 maybe? 12, yeah, I think. I think it was 12. I think it was 12. They uh, could have drafted Mac Jones there. I agree. I agree. So um, going back to Debo, it's just this offense is unique. Um, it is run heavy. But Debo fits in it well. He's efficient when he gets the ball in his hands. He still catches intermediate routes. Don't get me wrong, but he gets production other ways too. Um, I want to see one of the running quarterbacks we just talked about to make this uh, offense go up even more. Uh, I think Fields is a great thrower. Um, I just worry for Debo that uh, he's a hamstring guy. But I love his potential in this offense with a uh, new quarterback. So, Yeah, he's got the uh, Alshon Jeffrey the hamstring problem going on a little bit. So, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I think you're seeing this 10.3 ADP in April. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, just like the Odell Beckham, it's another April great ADP though. So it's exactly kind of... just like Odell Beckham, another great uh, receiver to keep your eye on his ADP as, as news comes and goes.
Well, Kelly's. as the draft comes and goes first, but you know, exactly as we see a better picture after the draft, and then we hear, start hearing camp news and stuff. So now we're talking about George Kittle here, who missed seven games last season after being the second tight end drafted uh, in fantasy drafts last year. Uh, some people were even saying George Kittle over Travis Kelsey. I mean, how to, were you ever in that camp whatsoever? Um, dynasty, yeah, sure. But no, redraft. I get the uh, dynasty aspect, but, re, but yeah. no, redraft, man. I redraft. I, I think I'm still on the Kelsey side. I, it's tough to say without hindsight right now because Kelsey just had a phenomenal year. And yeah, But no, uh, I think we knew uh, – Mahomes is so here's here's something Mahomes here's a, here's a rest just thrown to the so. equation here. Um, so like I said, he missed seven games last year. In 2019, he missed only two. This would be George Kittle, but in 2019, he averaged 12.9 points per game. You know who else averaged 12.9 points per game in 2019? Kelsey, Travis Kelsey. So you know the discussion was much more. Yeah made my lot more right. sense yeah i've and uh, well and i feel like at first i was like well the, the since the coordinators the the 49ers moved up to probably draft a quarterback in this year's yep. draft mm-hmm. like we were just talking about um i was like well maybe that kind of throws a wrench a little bit into kittle's value well here's the thing in 2018 and 2020, there were a combined 16 games that Kittle did not play with Jimmy Garoppolo. 16 games, so roughly a full season. He's that's, probably that's better. Season. He actually averaged 15.11 points per game <laughs> in those games without Jimmy better. Garoppolo as his quarterback. So, so like, and that's with that's with Nick Mullen, C.J. Beathard, mm-hmm. other unknown quarterbacks um, that I don't remember in those times too. So. And you have to think that the 49ers are trying to draft a rookie to at some point replace Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not right away. Maybe it's not. But at some point in probably this next season or in the future, Kittle is going to have a different quarterback and hopefully an upgrade too. So you shouldn't necessarily be scared of Kittle, even if the, even if it is a rookie to start the 2021 season. I think that there's there's an there's enough production f- gets funneled through mm-hmm. Kittle yeah. in this offense that there there isn't really any room to be, there isn't much room for fear in it. How I do you agree. feel about that? I completely agree, uh, except for injury. Um, I think this is a show me year in terms of I I'm on your I'm on your side. I'm still very high on Kittle. I'm a dynasty manager. I'm not budging on him. You know, he's still very, very valuable in redraft and mm-hmm. uh, and overall. So no, he's going to be great. I just if if I get another injury riddled season, I, it has to start going into the the rankings. It has to start being talked about with guys like Waller and Pitts. Yeah, and may, maybe even uh, Detroit Detroit guy, the other Iowa kid, Hawkinson. Hawk, yeah, Hawkinson. Maybe he he takes a step forward. Uh, Did gosh, you say I, Pitts? Yeah, because I'm talking about after next year. This oh, is a okay. show me like, year I'm in like, 2021. Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what Kittle does in terms of health and production. We feel great about mm-hmm. his production if the health is there, and then we'll see what all these other guys currently below him in the rankings. Because Pitts is going to jump right in as a, as a top 12 tight end most likely because the li- tight end landscape is so blah after like four, five, or six. You know, it's real bad. And I love Tanya. I love this t- year. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Do I have to remind you what rookie tight ends do? And that is nothing. No, uh, yeah, it, he'll be fine. <laughs> All right. What? Okay. You uh, need to, we don't. We don't like, want to talk about pits. My point is, the guys below Kittle uh, is, uh, you know, we'll see what they do. So he okay. could be if if he has an injury riddled season and okay production, he's going to become the tight end three, four, or five because I think Waller's in for great. You know, whatever he has left of his mm-hmm. career. Uh, and these are the young guys. So yeah, that's my concern, but no, I'm still on your side. I'm still high on Kittle. I think he's fine. I think these are freaking, I think he's the number two tight end off the board. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's, that's, um, the story. don't I forget th- about it. <laughs> the, yeah, I think the problem with Kittle is, is if, if, if he is the number two tight end off the board and if or, I mean, I'm not, there's not an if, if he's the number two tight end off the board, he's, he should be the number two tight end mm-hmm. off the board. Mm-hmm. But if, he misses more than two games this season, this this twenty twenty one season. I'm going into injury prone territory. That's that. Yep, yeah, that's a better way to put it. Yep, I agree. 
And then, and then in 2022, I'm going to start looking at him as, yeah, he's really great, but if he's going to miss four games every season or average missing I four games. I have to factor that in to my ranking. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he, instead of it being like a, a fourth or fifth round pick, he's now like a seventh or eighth round pick, you know? like Yeah. Yeah. I might be a little more forgiving than two games. I, I used the term injury riddled a moment ago. Somewhere between injury riddled and two games is probably where I'm at. So I, it would have to be more than two, though. That's what I I'm can't saying. wait. Like, to I, I can go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'll, I'll give I'll give people a pass on this in a couple of games. You know, okay, like okay, that's cool. so that's not that's not right. torpe- so, probably torpedoing your season. Two games. So we're we're right here. We're right, right here. And you know what? I'm excited yeah. to see this draft and see which which QB ends up here. Oh man. Um. Hopefully, it is Trey Lance. Just saying. Uh, and you're you're on you're in team fields on team Lance. You know it's funny because I I don't think I ever mentioned to you on text or anything. I was team Lance, um, and I just think I'm I think I'm flop flop. You saw the you saw the, um, the you saw the number of times that he threw the ball per game. I just don't like, feel Ooh. great about Lance not playing any football last year. You know, didn't did Fields play last year? He did, didn't he? Lance played last year. Do I have that flip flopped? No, no. Lance played like one game, dude. I'm pretty what? sure, yeah. Okay, well, anyway, the next, we, we the next, uh, like that. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the next couple of guys that we're going to talk about are we're just going to kind of run through some guys, some names real quick. But one really kind of needs to be mentioned because he was going into next uh, last season. He was a superstar, and that is Michael Thomas. Oh, um, I, what do you have written down on Michael Thomas other than he plays for the New Orleans Saints? <laughs> Oh, he did only I, play one game. Look at that. Lance did. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Right, whatever. Okay, thank you, <laughs> uh, Michael Thomas. Um, do we think Michael Thomas can return to fantasy dominance with either Taysom Hill or Jameis as a starting QB? That's the elephant in the room, as far as I'm concerned. That comes completely down to it's that. a big elephant, and it's a small room. Yeah, and this may not be the most popular opinion either. I also think Michael Thomas has been a bit, a bit of a compiler, like uh, Michael, like a Mike Evans throughout his career. He's not the best athlete. He's going to get 140 targets a year. You know, those 140 targets might be gone, folks, because Drew Brees hung him up, you know, and that man threw the ball a lot. Now, New Orleans is a running team now, and they have been actually for quite a few years. A good point. Yeah. Now they've got a great defense, too. So that helps offset some of the volume, I think, in fantasy terms. Um, I mean, Jameis has proven he can sustain multiple top 10 wide receivers, but can he maintain his starting role? If history is any indicator, no, he cannot. Uh, I think, go ahead. I think Jameis's problem is if he starts, th- if he starts turning the ball over a lot, Sean Payton's going to, if, okay. So say well, exactly James Winston, say Jameis Winston starts this season for mm-hmm. whatever reason. And he starts throwing those, those uh, interceptions like he was in, in Tampa. They're going to go right to Taysom Hill. Yep. Or it might be they might do some they might try some weird hybrid of Taysom Hill and, and yes. Jameis Winston. That leash will be short. And that scares that scares the bejesus out of me. Mm-hmm. Now, if anybody can coach him up, it's the coaches in New Orleans, Sean Payton on the offensive side I of guess. all quarterbacks. But as I just said, if history is any cater, no, he will not be able to maintain his starting role because he'll get yanked because he'll have a short leash because Yeah. And to be quite frank, they've they're on record saying Taysom's gonna be the starter. Now it's April. We'll see. Nobody wants yeah. to put any cloud into that yet um yeah. let's see breeze hurt second game back i'm whoa, whoa, whoa. that doesn't make any sense <laughs> yes uh, the, michael really thomas's know. second game back breeze got hurt so we were we saw one saw one game with breeze and then you know then not uh however and in week 11 uh thomas had a great game uh Taysom hill managed to go off for 233 passing yards and 49 rushing with two Rushing touchdowns, Thomas managed to haul in 104 passing yards. I'm sorry, 104 receiving yards and 14.9 half PPR points. So yep. solid, solid week. Week 12, yeah. very low yardage totals for both of them. Taysom with 78 passing yards. Thomas pulls in 50 of those 78 yards. Uh, then back on track again in week 13 uh, versus Atlanta again. Ironically, Thomas gets 105 yards and 15 half PPR points. So that's really the all we've got to go off of in terms of a snapshot of him without Breeze slash and, with Taysom. And, and and I'm like, and you know, as 
any, anyone listening slash watching can kind of assess out there hmm. is that you know if you threw a touchdown in one of those one of those two or maybe even both those hundred yard games in week eleven and thirteen, now you're taking a fourteen point game, making it a twenty, a fifteen, and twenty one top five for the week. Yeah, 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 and now and now you're up there in the upper echelon there, and so you know it's. Yeah, there's going to be weeks where he doesn't get a touchdown, but yeah, there's also going to be some weeks where maybe he even gets two in there. You know, I, like yeah, I think I think from my side, Al, my concern is Taysom and Kamara stealing all those touchdowns. I say all Taysom and Kamara stealing a lot of those touchdowns. I mean, this is a running we'll team, see. and those are red we'll zone see. threats. Uh, but I still have hope for Taysom to be a serviceable quarterback through the air, and I think we saw a little bit of it with two thirty three and three uh, close to three hundred yards, maybe. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. I uh, just, you know, I'd rather have Kamar. Let me put it that way than I'd rather have Michael Thomas. I, I don't know if how much I wanted the passing game. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to cut you short here, but I think maybe we good. should get moving along to the, uh, the, the last three guys on our list I here. Was just finishing up because the last guys are, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, let's just do real quick here. Preston Williams, he missed, uh, I think, 15 plus games this past season he got injured in week one Very early. kind of a bummer because he was a bit of a, a late round um darling of your target for me mm-hmm. yeah yeah for sure because it was what he did with mainly with um oh fish uh it's magic yes in in 2019 but um what what do you think about preston williams uh for, he, for this for the 2021 season that is i think as uh just Talent and player valuation, I think we're going to be left holding the bag because I think he's probably going to be moved out of the equation in terms of targets and and, and whatnot. Um, Miami came back up for receiver, I think. Uh, At least that's the consensus, and they signed Will Fuller, and they still have Devontae Parker under contract. Not to mention Mike Gusecki. I think he could even take another step. Um, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, Me as well. Williams' volume is already scary low. Uh, You could throw Hakeem Hakeem Grant into the – into the equation too. Uh, Jakeem. Jakeem, thank you. I knew I was going to mess yeah. that up. It's not Hakeem. No, you were close. Folks. <laughs> uh, what if Jamal Chase falls? Uh, I think they're at six. So, you know. He could easily fall to there. He easily He could. very well could, especially depending on what happens to Pitts. You 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 don't picture Pitts going to Miami because they have Gasecki. So, I think we see I love that you are just so focused on – Pits and like the complete uh, like offensive side of football and when it up with the upcoming draft and I'm like, yeah, but man, there's man, I don't know. What, we O-line? talked about this earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that was more sensey. It was more sensey side of things, not uh, yeah, not Miami yeah. per se. Anyways, um, so yeah, Preston Williams, just kind of summing up real quick. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to. If you have like a really deep league, uh, like a 16 team league or a late round pick with him, cool. Maybe keep your eye on him for uh, the beginning of the season in smaller redraft leagues to kind of, you know, maybe a, a, a potential free agency target, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. waiver wire pickup. Other than that, I'm, I'm staying away from him. Um, even if the, even if they don't draft a, uh, a wide receiver of note in the draft, that be the Dolphins. I'm still kind of keeping away from Preston Williams at the moment. Because of Will Fuller signing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's move on to our next guy here, Paris Campbell. He, he was very highly touted uh, receiver coming out of Ohio State. Obviously, he is a receiver for the Colts, if you didn't know that. Um, he has played maybe five games in his – this is going into oh, his third year. Career, golly. Yeah. He is – and, like, everyone thinks the world of him, and I'm like, I barely see him on the field, so – I, I don't know really what else to say about him other than Carson Wentz is the new quarterback for the Colts and T.Y. Hilton's still there. And um, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Pittman, they just drafted last year, who showed that he's got some some p- capabilities of catching the ball. He's not the fastest guy in the world. Paris Campbell is supposed to be more of that. Like um, Yeah, he's that's what I was going to say when you were done. Is like speed, faster speed version is of uh, yeah. Paris Campbell is supposed to be like a faster uh, Jarvis Landry, I guess. Mm. You know, kind yeah. of a slot receiver guy, kind of guy. Um, I don't really have much else to say other than, you know, he's, it's, it's a name to kind of keep fresh in your brain because if there's, if there's buzz coming out of the Colts camp that he's healthy and it looks like he's got a connection with Wentz, then maybe he's going to be another late round pick, uh, for people or a a name to at least keep in your brain in the draft, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's move, let's move on to, uh, Mims here. Denzel Mims, uh, the wide receiver for the New York jets, of course. Yep. Just, I kind of like him. 
I kind of like too. him to be honest. I mean, si- size is and is is nice to have at the receiver position. We touched and Chiefs on how- size. Yeah, exactly. And we touched on how much we like players leaving Matt Gase. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or Matt uh, Gase leaving the, the players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he's an easy guy to forget about. Uh, he's still regarded as a top pre- prospect. Well, obviously, he's not a prospect anymore because he now has an NFL team. But at the time, he was considered one of the top prospects at the position. The likes of what we're talking about this year with Chase and in years past with like the Galladays and whatnot. That type of mold, that type of receiver. He's 6'3", 207. Uh, he had an awful catch rate uh, with uh, you know Sam Darnold. Uh, well, Sam Darnold and at least a few games of somebody else, I believe. Uh, 52.3 catch rate, not good. Uh, but was great it yards. Joe Flacco? Might have been. Yes, thank you. It yeah, was Joe Flacco. I think it was Joe Flacco. He's come up twice. What the heck, man? Die already. No, I'm just I kidding. Been, I'm just kidding. I, I think we've been mentioning Joe Flacco I think he retired, much. didn't he? Did he retire finally? No, know. he's in... Um... Oh, where did he go? I don't remember where he went, but I keep going. Backing up somebody, I think, yeah. Um. Oh, he is. But great yards per reception at 15 and a half as a rookie uh, could be a great value in Dynasty. Feels like a lot of folks are low on him right now. Uh, similar draft profile to Devontae Adams, who took three years to develop, and uh, that was with a Hall of Fame quarterback. So, you know, you might want to give Mims a little bit of time in Dynasty. Uh, contested catch beast, but also showed good speed until uh, mm-hmm. until his last year. Kind of His stats kind of went down, and it seemed to show less separation. But uh, let's hope that was an injury. Uh, coming out of Baylor, by the way. Uh, if you think Philly, I, think I, was, just, I was just wondering. Yeah, never mind. Um, so now that we see, uh, you know, we're gonna see. I'm sorry, what's the kid's name? Zach, uh, the quarterback. Zach Wilson. I keep wanting Protect to say Jay. Thomas so badly. Uh, Zach Who's Wilson. Zach Thomas. I don't know. Uh, old linebacker for Miami <laughs> Dolphins. <laughs> Played at A and M. Has no neck. Anyway, Zach Wilson, <laughs> the quarterback coming out of BYU. Uh, what I've heard about him is uh, just a great arm talent. So I think we can at least depend on him to get the ball out early. You know, just 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 a lot of probably volume there with a bad team, catch up game wow. script. You know, uh, Dizel Mims could see a lot of volume. I don't see them putting a guy in front of Mims as far as drafting a guy. Free agencies come and gone. They did pick up Corey Davis, um, so it's important to remember that. But I see Corey Davis as more of a let the young guy come along. Let's bring in a veteran number two, uh, one of the better number twos in the league in Corey Davis. I think Mim still has a chance to be the one, at least mm-hmm. maybe maybe 2022, but hopefully next year, hopefully this coming year, 2021. So that's where I'm at on Mims. Don't forget about him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're not, you're not wrong. Zach Thomas has no neck. I that you. is, that is one really big guy. Yep, wow. Yep. Uh, fun fact, actually played for the Cowboys for a little bit. Yes, he did. And uh, there's also a Zach Thomas district attorney in Kansas as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not the same guy. Ambulance chaser. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, lawyers at home. No offense, man. No, he's a, no, he's a district attorney. He's not an Oh, you did chaser. say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because I almost, I almost ran with that. I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's a legit like district attorney. My bad. Anyways, uh, that's been our Remember One show uh, coming up next week. And the week after we will be doing some pre- oh, boy. Some pre-draft coverage. Chris is salivating at the mouth at the moment. He can't wait for his Dolphins to take Kyle Pitts and whatever. Um, After that, we are after those two weeks, we are going to be doing a live in person. The two of us in person. uh, uh, First round of the NFL draft coverage on our Twitch channel, which is Twitch TV, Twitch TV slash Amazing Fantasy Football. We will be in Chris's studio basement, basement studio, sorry. And uh, we'll be doing that. And I think we're going to actually record an episode sitting together as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, instead of uh, you seeing my comic books behind me and Chris's whatever he's got going on back we, we there. We probably do a him. draft reaction episode the next yep. day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That sounds mm-hmm. exciting. The, um, the next day or the day after. We'll have time. Know. We'll have time to. Uh, right before you kick me out of your house, we'll do that show. And then you're going to be like, leave. Yes. <laughs> that is uh, post breakfast, pre uh, kicking out. <laughs> yes, maybe you'll just kick me out on the show, and you just be like, "All right, I'm done with it." Hit the, hit the button, <laughs> click. No, it's going to be amazing. I'm mean, so exciting. Not only am I excited to see you, I'm as I've mentioned multiple times on our shows. I'm just really excited to get into these draft prospects. Uh, last year's off season came with kind of a funk with the pandemic, so this 
Yeah, yeah I'm for feel sure. Like, I really feel like I've shaken off the funk and I want to get back into kind of my, uh, the part I most enjoy, uh, the personnel aspect of, uh, of fantasy. Mm-hmm. And as always, if you are watching in YouTube format, you can check us out in podcast form wherever you get your podcast at Links from, below. you know, from Apple or from Google, you know, your local podcast dealer, you know, they're hopefully they're giving it away for free. Podcast um, dealer like it opens up his jacket. Yep. Hey. Me- Meeting in, meeting behind the local Burger King to get your podcast, you know. Ooh, that's dirty. Um, <laughs> what's that? I said, ooh, that's dirty. <laughs> I mean, man, you got to get your podcast where you can. So you can get your podcast. <laughs> that's a good point. And if you're listening in podcast format, you did get this behind your local uh, Burger King from your podcast dealer. You can also check us out for free in YouTube format. Try to go to a legitimate YouTube dealer for a change. Uh, yeah, go to the legitimate YouTube place, not some, not some Ukrainian dark web YouTube. <laughs> We're there also, folks. <laughs> oh, great. Um, but until then, until then, we're like I like I said already, we're going to be doing some pre-draft coverage on the players. Everyone, stay safe. Get your vaccines. Don't be name brand specific. They're all equally as good. Keep wearing your mask, even if you do get your vaccine. And have a good day. Peace out. <laughs>